Hi Sunil sir, good afternoon. Welcome to the show. How are you sir? Uh, I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Thank you Sunil sir for your time. And uh, our viewers would like to know what is your view on the gold and silver? Uh, in fact, gold and silver prices have been uh, very volatile uh, if we compare it with last two to three uh, months time timeline. And I can say gold and silver have actually uh, rallied uh, in a very unprecedented rate. And we have seen uh, year till date gold has given a, a return of close to 40%. And silver has actually given a return of close to 80%. Uh, obviously, uh, backed by a lot of fundamentals, obviously, uh, we have seen gold prices touch close to 56,200 rupees in domestic markets in India. And at comics, we have seen close to $2,080. And when we talk about silver, domestically, we have seen close to 78,000 rupees levels uh, being touched by silver. And in international markets, we have uh, we have seen the prices touch close to $30 per troy ounce mark. And uh, this rally was uh, backed by a lot of things. Uh, all of us know uh, the COVID impact on overall economy, overall global economy. Overall global GDP, uh, you know, has shrunk by a big margin. and there is a lot of uncertainty linked to COVID and how the you know global economy is going to shape uh, as we move ahead. Uh, but if we see most of the central banks have uh, now uh, ensured that the monetary policy is very loose, uh, they have made easy money available uh, for for the economy to thrive. Obviously, that uh, you know brings down the interest rates to a great extent, and that increases uh, the inflation to a large extent. Now, these two things are uh, very positive for the precious metals. Uh, because uh, gold is called as the alternate hedge against dollar. If dollar weakens, uh, then uh, we see interest coming in, uh, you know, gold prices. Uh, because a lot of investors, be it retail, H and I, or institutions, they tend to park their money in gold uh, by by selling dollar. And that's where we have seen a huge amount of uh, rally in gold and silver uh, in the recent time. And we actually uh, see some, uh, you know, consolidation happen for a very short span of time because we have some positivity coming in uh, from uh, recovery of global economy because most of the countries have now kind of eased out the lockdown restrictions that we have seen. Uh, so manufacturing activities have started. Uh, we are seeing some positive manufacturing data coming in from U.S., Europe, or even China. Now, these positive, uh, you know, sentiments normally put pressure on gold prices. Uh, and that's the reason why we saw gold prices in the domestic market, if we talk about, uh, have corrected from uh, 56,200 levels to the current level of close to 51,000 rupees. And even silver prices, we had seen a drop of 78,000, and now we are seeing prices trading close to 70,000 rupees a kg. Uh, now, with the current uh, scenario, I'm not saying everything is back on track because the economy is still uncertain. Uh, over a period of time, the central banks will, uh, you know, uh, take a step back. Uh, they may possibly tighten the monetary policy just to make sure the inflation doesn't go beyond overboard. Uh, when that happens, obviously, we will again start seeing uh, some panic in the market, uh, and, and that may actually support the gold prices. But uh, in the near term, if you talk about the fundamentals like uh, easy money being available with the stimulus measures going uh, you know, on an on a unlimited scale, uh, the inflation is expected to stay around 2% if we talk about the U.S. as a country. And uh, resurfacing U.S.-China trade tensions will also support uh, the gold prices as we move ahead. Uh, and obviously, uh, the recent Jackson Hole meeting, uh, Fed chairman also commented uh, that the Fed rates are expected to stay lower, uh, you know, even for uh, coming six months' time. So these two, three important factors are going to support uh, gold prices. And uh, if we talk about silver, uh, then silver is an industrial commodity. It is also a part of precious metals. So it it rallies backed by rally in gold. At the same time, it rallies backed by some support in the industrial commodities because 30 percent of silver consumption comes from the jewelry side, say seven demand front, and 60 70 percent of its demand comes from the industrial side. Uh, silver is uh, predominantly consumed, uh, you know, in the manufacturing of electronic vehicles or uh, even uh, the electronic smart gadgets that we use these days, even the solar panels and then N number of applications with the easing in lockdowns, most of the manufacturing activities are back on track. And uh, even there are some disruptions in the mining activities because of the COVID cases, and that's the reason why the supply is also not to an extent, and that's the reason why we expect even silver prices to rally. By Deepavali, we expect the gold prices to touch close to 57, 58,000 mark in the domestic market, 
and the silver we are expecting the prices to touch close to 80000 rupees uh, maybe by november or so so interesting times for the market you know uh, you know and also the monsoons the way they have panned out so agri commodities are also looking uh, good right now uh in fact i can say the monsoons have been better i can say to keep us 15% uh, better than what we had uh, expected uh if we see uh compare it uh, with last year then we can say uh 15% premium on the monsoon uh, performance so uh, overall i think uh, you know if we say uh, overall agri as a belt uh, you know it is divided in uh, pulses and then we are talking about soya complex and then edible oil complex uh, now uh, from the pulses perspective uh with excessive rain that we have seen recently there are some news of crop damage uh, that has actually uh, supported uh, the chana prices uh, recently now the chana, chana prices are trading close to 4900 5000 uh, rupees per uh, you know quintal mark uh, there is also a, a festive demand uh, you know that is that is being created in the market and if we see actually uh, the kharif crop in maharashtra and mp was uh, damaged to an extent by the heavy rains that we recently saw even nafed a government entity uh, is not uh, selling uh, chana in the market so that's the reason uh, the shortfall is what we are witnessing in the mandis uh, in chana uh, at the moment and that is what is supporting the prices uh, if we talk about uh, soya bean uh, from the agri front uh, recently uh, we have seen some demand coming in from uh, uh, you know the poultry industry uh, soya uh, you know actually also follows the international market Uh, seaboard soya bean us crop uh, you know condition is also deteriorating because of the dry weather there even that is supporting international soya prices uh, we have also seen some uh, good imports from china in the soya bean uh, uh, products so that's the reason why even soya is finding some decent support in the domestic market uh, even uh, if we talk about indian domestic uh, soya output uh, we have witnessed some uh, you know crop damages due to uh, the the you know excessive rain that we have seen recently so even that is supporting the prices but overall i think soya bean prices are expected to stay in a range a tight range of close to 3800 rupees uh, to 4000 mark uh, per quintal uh, because uh, recently we have also started seeing uh, in the south rajasthan west mp and gujarat side uh, the weather forecast is normal and uh, the the conditions are bit dry which is uh, you know a, a beneficial uh, thing for the crops and that may keep the prices in a tight range so we are mostly expecting the prices to stay range bound uh, on the agri side the most important commodity what we call it as white gold cotton uh, you know cotton also witnessed some crop damage in the northern india uh, due to the excessive rain that we have seen uh, but uh, the supply is in abundance uh, because the textile mills are not functioning at 100% capacity due to the lockdown uh, you know possibly we are seeing them perform at 60 70% capacity and that's the reason why the prices are staying close to 17800 rupees a bale or 18000 rupees a bale and we expect the prices to stay uh, near about this range only because of the excess uh, supply that we have even uh, from the acreage front uh, since the weather is good uh, we have seen comparatively last year if we see the acreage is more by almost 70% so that uh, is a huge number in terms of the area coverage so that obviously uh, takes out any concerns regarding the supply so supply is in abundance and we expect the prices to stay close to 17000 to 18000 rupees a bale for cotton so overall agri basket i can say the supply and demand is more or less uh, in check except for few few commodities where we have seen some news on crop damage like chana and so on where the prices have actually improved a bit uh, but otherwise i think almost all agri basket the commodities will remain uh, you know in a, in a tight range i can say with the supply and demand being neck to neck uh from from uh, next three months or four months perspective right right and uh, so just one more question you know was uh, with vaccine announcement coming from lot of uh, international players what do you think uh, do you see any action in the crude and uh, commodity price uh, in fact uh, crude oil has been very stable uh, if we see it from last couple of months time uh, you know the crude oil prices have been hovering around 40 dollar or 43 dollar mark uh and and with the positivity in uh, covid vaccine across the globe uh, you know there were uh, predictions that the crude consumption of crude demand will will go up but unfortunately we have not seen uh, that demand go up by a very significant uh, you know margin uh, we have in fact seen uh, we have seen uh, you know the demand getting lower and lower and that's the reason why we have now seen the wti prices of crude oil have come below 40 dollars a mark 
forty dollars per barrel mark, and we expect the prices to bottom out around thirty eight dollars uh, till the time uh, we don't see a significant increase in the industrial uh, consumption. Uh, we, till the time we don't see people uh, moving out of their homes, uh, you know, people start working from offices. Uh, you know, the crude oil consumption will remain uh, concern. But otherwise, uh, there are some positivities in the market because the OPEC plus nations are very compliant in terms of maintaining the output curve, which is keeping the supply and demand, uh, you know, neck to neck. There is no excess supply, there is no excess demand as such at the moment. Uh, and, and obviously, with the concerns of uh, futures demand, that's the reason why the prices have not rallied to a great extent. Right. But domestically, I believe the prices should stabilize around 2,900 rupees a barrel. And uh, that marks a good entry level for any buyer who, who, who wishes to hold for a couple of months' time. Uh, with the positivity in the market, uh, with COVID vaccine, uh, you know, around the corner, we can see the consumption uh, going back up again. Uh, dollar term, we can expect, uh, again, crude prices to touch $48 a mark. And in rupee term, we can possibly see 3,500 rupees per barrel as a price on the domestic market. Right. In and the uh, and uh, on the just uh, extension of that, on the natural gas side, uh, do you see a similar story? Uh, actually, natural gas, since we are in September now, uh, it is a transition uh, period for natural gas because we'll be moving from summer to winter in the U.S., actually. Okay. So now uh, this brief uh, September, October, November, uh, November month uh, will be totally a flat month, I can say, from the natural gas perspective. But recently we had seen a surge in natural gas prices. Uh, it improved from 130, uh, uh, you know, per mm BTU price to close to uh, 200 rupees uh, per mm BTU uh, price. Uh, but now, uh, with uh, the hurricane season around the corner, uh, the temperatures have actually gone down in U.S. because of the rains, and that's the reason why uh, the consumption to an extent has gone down, and that's why we are seeing some consolidation happening in the natural gas prices. Uh, even uh, there are some power outage cases uh, across, uh, you know, uh, the, the U.S. coast uh, because of the storm, and that has also reduced uh, the daily consumption to an extent, and that is the reason why the prices have come down. Uh, I believe uh, the prices will stay uh, close to 170, 175, uh, you know, till the time we uh, move into the winter, uh, because we see December onwards the winter will start in the U.S. and that is when uh, the natural gas consumption or the demand will go up, uh, and that is when we may possibly expect the prices to again go up uh, beyond 200 mark. Possibly we may see 230 to 40 range. Uh, in another three to four months' time, by the time winter starts, we should see uh, two thirty to forty as a uh, range for natural gas. Uh, right. Right. Uh, so, so, so that's what we expect. Right. And finally, you know, any views on the metal side? Uh, you know, overall, with the ease, uh, you know, with the with the easing lockdown, uh, with the stimulus packages uh, given by most of the central banks to boost their economy, uh, to boost the manufacturing sector. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the industrial metals are going to perform better. Uh, we have already seen the prices improve uh, from its bottom. Uh, we have seen copper prices improve from uh, 400 rupees per kg uh, to now close to 525 per kg. Uh, we have seen zinc prices improve from 140 mark to now close to, uh, you know, 180. Uh, we also have seen other metals perform better, like nickel has actually, uh, you know, jumped from 800 levels to close to 1150 mark now uh, so so we are seeing some rapid increase in uh, demand because most of the countries are kind of reopening their manufacturing uh, activities and uh, with the improvement in economic data we are already we have also already started seeing some positivity in the in the uh, manufacturing data that we are seeing from US or China or even from European side uh, even I think uh, the major news because of which the base metal or industrial metal prices jumped was uh, due to uh, the, the mining shutdown. You know, there was a disruption in the mining activities because of the COVID cases. Uh, there was a shortage of uh, labor and that led to shortage of supply globally. Uh, and and uh, that's why we are seeing most of the industrial metals trading uh, close to their multi-year highs. And uh, if we talk category-wise, I think copper looks to be a lucrative uh, commodity at the moment. It is trading close to 525 uh, per kg mark. And we actually expect copper prices to touch close to 530 uh, to 540 in a week or 10 days' time. If we talk about three to four months' time frame, we may possibly see uh, see the prices touch 550 as well. Uh, the reason being... Uh, 
uh, you know inventories at london london metal exchange are close to uh, 14 year low now uh, there is a positivity on us china trade deal uh, you know around the corner uh, we are continuing to see the supply disruption across uh, you know the mines uh, which is which is actually supporting the prices and uh, more importantly i think china is a major importer of copper and year on year import data suggests that copper imports have doubled you know if we compare it with the last last year numbers and uh, continued uh, stimulus measures from the central banks is going to support the industrial metal prices so we expect copper prices to stay firm accordingly i think nickel is also expected to stay firm uh, currently the prices are in the range of 1150 per kg uh, we may actually see the prices touch close to 1200 1250 in coming 2 to 3 months time Uh, because overall the global production has actually uh, gone down by 7.5% due to the covid uh, you know uh, pandemic that we have seen uh, i think even from the zinc perspective we should see 210 220 rupees as a target from the next three months perspective uh, with with the prices currently trading at 197 uh, and i i think overall the base metal pack or the industrial commodity pack is expected to stay firm uh, because of the revamp uh, revamping nature of uh, manufacturing activities that we are seeing across the globe right so you know it was pleasure talking to you thank you so much for your time uh same here thank you very much for the uh, you know uh, support and uh, we will look forward to do such more sessions going forward thank you so much sir thank you so much yeah thank you very much have a good day bye bye